Good morning. We will call the meeting to order for September 3rd, 2013. First item is the approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Carried. There are no citizens to be heard. The next item is the approval of the minutes for August 20th and 27th, 2013. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Carried. Approval of bills and vouchers. Go approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 The bills are paid. The next item is the approval of the Second Amendment to the Limited Joint Powers Agreement Metro Flood Diversion Project. Uh, Brian, and we have that in our folder. Good morning, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Right. Um, I'm <clears throat> also going to pass around a uh, request for a second motion uh, in regards to this uh, second amendment, and that would be for the funding. But we can deal with that. I just didn't want to do it right now. But <clears throat> uh, you have in front of you and you have in your, your board packets the second amendment to the joint powers agreement with the flood diversion. And there was a summary on the front, and, and uh, we can just review that for the sake of um, anyone that may be watching. Uh, there's not many changes to the agreement. Uh, there's a little bit of a change in the name, but the names are kind of uh, interchangeable. Uh, many refer to it as the Diversion Authority or the Metro Flood Diversion Authority is kind of the official name, but when they go back and go back and forth, it's, it's the uh, Fargo-Moorhead Diversion uh, Authority or the, or the uh, FM Diversion Authority, is, and you'll see it referred to in the agreement to that effect. Uh, it clarifies the existing authority uh, to, of, the, of the, the, the power of the authority, that would be a better way to put it, the Diversion Authority and the, um, refers to the fiscal year 2014 budget of $70 million, and of that, the Minnesota obligation is 190000 And there, um, I think it's fair to say, Kevin, there's been, an, or Commissioner Campbell, there's been an agreement between Minnesota and Clay County to split that 190000 Well, uh, between Clay and Moorhead. Between Clay and Moorhead, that's yes. correct. Yes, and that's what the second motion is for today because it's not in the agreement just refers to the 190,000. Uh, and then the dates of the uh, joint um, power Chairman, agreement. Uh, where does the other, the rest of the 70 million come from? Uh, Mr. Chair, the, um, and I see Commissioner Campbell is on the Board of Authority, so maybe it would be proper for him to well, respond. Well, yeah, the, um, the remaining 70 million all comes from uh, there's there still is a there's a portion that comes from the Army Corps, Corps. that mm -hmm. still has their funds into it the state of North Dakota Cass County and the city of Fargo will pick up all the remaining dollars that are in that those are all uh, dollars uh, the state dollars of course were approved in their last legislative session that authorized them to use some of those funds for the uh, uh, Oxbow Hicks and Bakke project and uh, as well as um, then the remainder of that uh, those funds would come from the CAS and the City of Fargo sales taxes. Because it's certainly not a 10 percent. No, no. And, and you know we uh, because the 10 percent number John as we all know was a was a number originally talked about as a, as a target point um, but, but, you know, the city of Moorhead and Clay County talking about our um, need to have um, the Minnesota share covered by the state, and until that would happen, um, the 190 is our maximum amount that we would pay. Point, so. And, Mr. Chair and, and Commissioners, also within this second amendment, there is an understanding, a clear understanding, that the funding for the Minnesota, Minnesota side, if approved by the Congress, 
will come from the state and not from the local entities uh, within this agreement. So there. It, it's actually it's actually better language for Minnesota, for Moorhead and Clay County in terms of protecting for us to, you know, if the state of Minnesota were to decide that they're not going to pay anything, Clay County and the city of Moorhead will not be liable. That's right. This is the maximum that would be. That's the maximum. That is correct. And that's been reviewed by uh, our attorneys, yes. the city of Moorhead attorneys. And yes. Right. Anything else on this item? Not on this item. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, just to follow up on that too, um, part of this amendment then also does incorporate the JPA as a third member of the um, uh, yeah, sponsor. The sponsor. There you go. It's a mm -hmm. becomes a third sponsoring agency. And I got a I got a call from a member of the watershed district, and there was some concerns about uh, that uh, moving forward right now because of the dollars involved and I know there's a meeting going to be on September 9th with the watershed and I was asked to be there and I have a conflict but I was hoping maybe either you or Grant could maybe go to that but I think one of their one of their key issues or one of the key concerns that I heard about is they were worried about the potential for a financial commitment on the part of the watershed and I you know I think we just need to assure the um, Buffalo Red Watershed District that this puts no uh, financial burden on them whatsoever and it would I would think it would be in their best interest to be part of it as opposed to not be at the table right. you know so I, I just want to bring that up Mr. Chairman because I know I had I'd gotten a call on it and I, maybe I can talk more with you and and Grant about possibly going to that meeting sure okay. Grant do you have anything to add on this issue no. right. Well, and, and Mr. Chair, uh, Commissioner Campbell brings up a good point because I did have a conversation on last Friday or Thursday to um, Bruce Albright, the administrator of the Buffalo Red Watershed. And when I mentioned the 190 would be split between Clay County and Moorhead, he said, oh, well, he said, I'm glad that's resolved because that was a question on our board, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, they have been asking questions about the financing, so that's good. Yeah. Gentlemen, your wishes on this? Well, I, I would... Uh, I would move that we uh, approve the second amendment to the limited JPA. Second. Discussion? John? Yeah, I, I have, uh, you know, because of the limitations of the amount, uh, I will vote for this, but I, I certainly have have some questions as to whether or not we should be continuing to, to obligate these kinds of mass dollars, 70 million for a project that many many think will not happen at this point uh, we had a lot of hurdles to go over and uh, we keep on spending some major monies and and uh, it's a, it's a questionable investment i think at this point but uh, i will i will vote for it uh, because I, likewise i think it's we're better off being a part of the discussion than to be uh, let someone else make all the decisions so but i uh, i really have uh, some grave concerns about the, uh, the amount of money that's being put into this thing and, okay. and the, the likelihood of it happening at all. Yeah, Mr. Min and, and Commissioner Everett, I, I certainly appreciate your comments. I, 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 I do believe that if you take a look at the $70 million that, that is being going to be spent, the whole idea behind whatever the Diversion Authority does approve and spend, it's meant to be a good dollar spent, whether or not the diversion is ultimately built or not because we're still incorporating flood protection measures the vast majority of these dollars are going to be for the Oxbow Hicks and Bakke project as well as the in-town levees that are going to be constructed and all of these are in tandem with the diversion project so it's not like 70 million dollars is being thrown out the window here so you know, I just yeah, I appreciate the uh, you know what's being uh, spent for for Oxbow and so on but uh, uh, a big portion of this must also be for continued planning. Oh, sure. Yeah. So. Yeah. Further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion is carried. The next item that Brian has in front of us is to adopt a motion authorizing Clay County's share of $95,000 for uh, what we just did. Uh, flood diversion authority. Oh. Yeah, and um, Mr. Chairman, I, I would like that 
like it to be noted that that is, that is actually $50,000 less than we approved last year, and we had anticipated it being one, one, 150, right? We had anticipated, or one, 145. 145. Yeah, 145. So I would, I would move that we uh, cost share with the city of Morehead on, on the Minnesota share of 109,000 at 50% each. Second. Discussion. John? Uh, does that mean that our budget is 50,000 better than we had projected? Well, we've incorporated in the last budget. It's already incorporated. Yes. So. All right. I mean, just the last one we talked about last week had that. Okay. okay. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion is carried. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this time, review of the 2014 proposed budget and adopt the preliminary levy. Brian and the First Lady. You don't want to come up here. You are as well. The, uh, Mr. Chair, the first document I will pass out here is the expenses. And, and I'm not passing out the revenues by fund because we'll refer to, we'll refer to uh, the revenues, but the revenues are really pretty much an issue in public health and social services. And I can report on those. I don't have a document on here, but uh, what we did do is copy off the expenses, and we can go over those briefly. And we, I do have some additional information in regards to the the uh, two two major funds that we were talking. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I think we're good. Good. Okay. Okay, um, we've given you an update on the expenses and revenue projections for the first six months here a short time back, and uh, what had been requested by the board was kind of the uh, best guess, uh, educated guess as to where we were uh, for the time of the year right now. So this goes through August 28th of, of uh, <coughs> last week. We printed it off. and. What they are is summary sheets on there. You can certainly go through them if you'd like. I've kind of referred to the page number, and um, the page number is at the top there. And, and then it shows kind of the present, uh, present, uh, present it, percentages. There we go. <laughs> percentages that uh, they're at for this time of the year. <laughs> I'm trying to talk too fast here. And everything looks in good shape, I won't say really good shape, but they're in good shape running with tracking within your approved expenditures for 2013 for the period of time. And it, it really depends upon when these expenses were posted, but they're within two or three percent, I would have to say. That's a fairly accurate statement. Um, the only one on page two there, you'll see that, that um, information services uh, is a little ahead and he made two major purchases at the beginning of the year, and that'll even out as the year goes by. And that's what happens in some of these things. Now, um, corrections. In fact, I received an email, I think it was last week or the week before, from uh, Julie that said that that day they were 20 prisoners out. They've been running a little behind on, on out-of-county out boarding, which was a good thing for the budget. But recently, she said, as typical at the fall, it's, it's taken a spike again. So she said that day there were 20 out, um, which is getting to be quite a few. It gets to be expensive. Well, that's always expensive. Uh, but public safety is tracking well overall. Uh, general revenues are tracking well. A road and bridge. Road and bridge is really difficult because with construction season and the big bills that they pay, uh, they come in later. Uh, social services, and I know that is one of, of great interest. Last year, you approved in a budget, a budget of um, relying on $450,000 or uh, allowing them to rely on $450,000 of reserve to, to um, um, make their budget, make their expenses over their uh, revenues. And uh, she is stating that they are tracking 
within that. In other words, they will not need to utilize the 450000 So that is a very good thing. That's a lot of money. So public health is tracking that they will use about $60,000, and that was the same that I reported about a month ago, um, of the 250000 So both those are very good reports for the year. A solid waste as well within the budgeted amount. Um, Family Service Center is exceeding budgeted amount. However, this usually requires an interfund transfer at the end of the year, and you've been doing that for years and years and years. And when we talk about the budget, I'll, I'll mention it now, the expectations in 2014 is not to use an interfund transfer at the end of the year because the budget, we're budgeting the amount to cover those expenses. And it was a change with the payoff in their debt services over this last year too. So yeah, I talked a little bit about that couple different times. So overall total expenses are falling within the authorized uh, expenditures for, for the year, which is, is a good thing. Um, that doesn't mean that it can't go a little south between now and the end of the year, but right now it's tracking out. And I could tell from a couple of the commissioners they, they felt that it would be right on that. <laughs> That's good. I, I'm not surprised. That's right. That's, well, uh, we don't like surprises when it comes to budgets, so that's good. So, <clears throat> with that, I'll pass around another memo. This deals with the projected levy that we need for next year. And I know we've gone over this in pretty much detail in two or three discussions, but um, I thought maybe I should highlight some of the additional ones that just for, for uh, bringing you up to date. On the memo, all adjustments have been made to the proposed preliminary levy. Um, the new construction growth of 1% will be slightly affected uh, as the new home builders rebate program was effective September 1 of 2012. So there will be that three or four months where there will be rebates for 2014. Uh, now, Lori, we, Lori discussed this with Lori, and, and she's here. Uh, she doesn't feel that'll be a large payout because it's on homes only. It's not on the other commercials uh, property. And... I think it will really be pretty minimal for housing starts after September 1st. So it was just for that four-month period yeah. then? So, uh, the, so the 2013 the will show up in 15 then? Yes. Yep. The, That's the, the year city did the full year, City of Moore has, but yeah. the county started right. just that last year. Right. So. so it's 2015 where all the 1% could, you know, if it was all housing. residential, we might not be able to use that exactly. as a, yeah, okay. Thank you, Lori. And the other point, levy limits are in place for 2014. Lori has calculated our maximum levies, um, submitted the information to the Department of Revenue and proposed that levy does fall within our limits. The debt service of the county falls outside of the levy limits. And that's, uh, frankly, our levy limit was uh, the same levy as it was last year. So the only thing that's outside of uh, the levy limit is the debt services. So, um, and. As you can see, you, you come in with uh, a proposed max levy of $25,151,531. Now, uh, last year when you set your budget, um, you did set it with the idea of allowing two departments, meaning social services, to utilize 450000 of reserves and the... Um, uh, public health to use 250,000 reserves. That is not, you're not allowing that this year or that is not included in the budget. You're, you're yes. budgeting expenses. What's that? Yet. Yep. That's right. There you go. That's right. That's right. And uh, so I just wanted to remind you of that, that, that uh, last year you did um, utilize that in your, your budget. Um, Program aid was up this year of $527,000. Last year, it took a nosedive of $622,000. So it came back uh, about $100,000 short of what it had been prior to that. So the levy increase 
is about uh, $856,000, 856985 Now, um, not that, I mean, I know you're well aware of it, but if you remember, in uh, some of the new requests that, uh, and I, I kind of wanted to just to summarize where we were at with the new requests. And you, uh, they total, the new requests total $281,000 within this budget. Ten of those, ten thousand of that was for the information services. Ten thousand for technology services. Um, Twenty-two thousand seven hundred was for Department of Motor Vehicle, and that's to allow a uh, half-time or a full-time position halfway through the year. The big one that's within that two hundred eighty-one thousand dollars is uh, corrections, and we do have a meeting set up with uh, corrections to talk about that one pos position that is uh, is in this uh, new request. Um, it's one full-time position, but with the loss of six beds, uh, they are projecting uh, additional cost of about $172,000 to handle those new uh, costs. Juvenile detention um, made some changes to utilizing roster to full-time employees. That was about a $17,000 increase. And the new correctional facility, we've added $42,000. $500 in to establish an account for um, a new correctional facility. And with that, um, one of the new requests, then we talked about this, was that uh, Extension had asked for the funding of a half-time position. That is not in the new request. Also, Buildings and Grounds had asked for a uh, one full-time position, and that is not in the new request at this time. So that's kind of a summary of the new requests. And the others, we kind of went over the adjustments, but um, as commissioners had pointed out, and I think Commissioner Whalen pointed out a couple times, is that um, these were the reductions that we made were not cuts to current programs, they were reductions of increased requests. Okay. So we need an action on the preliminary order today. Uh, yes, and there is a resolution in your in your packet for the uh, the uh, max levy. Kevin, would you like to take a look at that and you're the money man? Okay. Motion. What if I don't like it? Well, there's somebody else. In there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to John. <laughs> It's a preliminary levy. I guess I don't have a problem with the preliminary levy. I, I would move a preliminary levy. I'll second it to the comment. Discussion, please. Yeah. John. Uh, I'm really pleased with the way this has come out so far. We started, uh, when we started, it looked really difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, things have come together. And, and the, the fact that the, uh, this reserve that we had, had put up as possibly being used uh, last year has, has not been used. That's a very good thing for uh, for our, our long-term position. So I uh, I think this is a good budget. I feel bad that we cannot do that uh, um, extension position, uh, but I, I think uh, other than that, we've done we've done pretty well with. Uh, now my understanding is that the uh, uh, the added. Uh, Need that uh, that uh, maintenance has, uh, we think, can be handled through roster, uh, the use of roster positions, and so on, because uh, there is certainly some complaints about uh, cleanliness and so on of the building. That, that's correct, Mr. Chair, and I and I do feel that some positions have been left vacant too long, and uh, we're working with them on selecting people and also adding some roster positions because there's on some unused funds there in the the salary line that need to be used before we ask for additional ones. And we're going to work very closely with them to get the people that they need. And then we can bring more accurate proposals to you. Yeah, good. Further discussion? Kevin? Well, <coughs> in follow-up to um, Commissioner Everett's comments, I, this is a preliminary levy. And you know the fact that we aren't using these the reserves that we had planned for and the fact that I still believe that we might be adding additional dollars to, re to reserves by the time we're done, uh, I think could still reopen a couple of these That'd these things as we move forward. Just, you know, I am I am really concerned about uh, 
Uh, you know, if you don't if you don't maintain a building, uh, uh, small things lead to bigger things down the way, and uh, so I'm concerned about that. And, and of course, we you know going back to extension, we used to have that. Um, <clears throat> I still think that if if it if it led to more of our youth being served, we should we could relook at that. But all of that. That's why I say we still need to see where we are with mm -hmm. what actually transpired in 2013 to make some of those decisions. But um, as, I, as I said before, I wasn't at all nervous about uh, building in the potential of using our reserves to cover those two departments because, quite frankly, I didn't see it happening. Mm -hmm. Because uh, history has shown over the last three or four years that that we've had not one, but two, and in some cases, cases closer to three million dollars in revenues over expenditures. And, and I haven't seen any trend that changes that either. So I just, I just Further point discussion? that out. <coughs> All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Motion's carried. Sorry, I got a little wordy there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Don't worry, watch it. <laughs> Um, I, I'd like to make a comment about uh, the, uh, uh, the extension thing that we uh, issued. The, the, I was at an extension meeting last week in, uh, in the cities, and Clay County was heavily featured, Clay County 4 Hers, in presenting the, uh, this uh, aquatic uh, robot uh, mm -hmm. demonstration, and they have just done so well with that. And I w would like for us to ask them to come and report to to our commission uh, meeting. So uh, if we can get that on the agenda sometime uh, in the next uh, month or two, then I think we could we we could uh, address this whole issue again after after having seen what okay. they've what they've done. It's a, it's a pretty this, powerful message. Okay. At this time, we're going to go to some committee reports, and um, let's start with the chief. Uh, nothing. nothing, Frank. Kevin. You know, I had a quiet week as well last week. I don't think I had any last week. No. John? Well, we'll be looking here. Oh, we had a highway tracking meeting. Yeah, we did have highway yeah, tracking. We had highway tracking Clark, after the... Kevin, do you want to cover that? Uh, we'll go back to you. Well, we'll let John do it. He's... Okay. John? John do it. Um, let's, <laughs> let's see here. Well, the highway, highway tracking was, uh, was a significant... Uh, Meeting and then that, that AMC meeting that uh, I think uh, you know Kevin can report on the highway tracking. The, the, okay. the AMC uh, meeting uh, that I talked about uh, extension meeting was uh, was really significant. I think in in that uh, Clay County 4-H was highly recommended and and, appra and praised for their for their work. So I just wanted to highlight that and, and invite him for us to give a formal invitation for them to come and report. It'd be good. So anything else, John? No. Yeah, going back to the highway tracking meeting, I, there were about five items on the agenda for that day, but probably the most significant one was we've had a, a couple of uh, business entities in uh, rural Clay County that have uh, shown some interest in wanting to cost share some, for some highway improvements, and we, we had some pretty lengthy discussion on that, and um, we certainly see the potential of that as, as being something positive anytime you can get uh, public private uh, working together on on projects is always a good thing uh, but we we still had a lot of questions and we're going to be um, we're going to be doing some further analysis of that through our highway tracking committee and then probably ultimately bringing something before this board for consideration and that, other than that and uh, maybe Brian if you want to during your report if, if those some of those other things you think are Quite frankly, I don't have my sheet, so I don't remember yeah. them all. But. And I, is that it, Kevin? Yeah. I had no meetings this week. Brian, we're going to go to you. Is that okay at this time for your report? And just in case there are some people who aren't here yet for employee recognition. Sure, Mr. <laughs> Chair. Uh, yes, highway tracking. Uh, Kevin, or Commissioner Campbell covered the main topic that we talked about there. We had an extensive discussion about that, and I think it's something that uh, going into the future is is uh, well worth considering. We also talked about some of the employee issues and filling the positions and, and the the uh, the permits and the revenues that's been generated with the permits out there and how we can offset 
the the workload there and and the uh, foreman position that is is now vacant and being filled there and how we look at the the manpower there and supervisory the foreman has 17 people that he <coughs> directly supervises and that is an awful lot um, so I, I'm trying to think of uh, some of the other things but uh, that was the the main thrust of it um, I guess uh, mr. chair did you want me to continue with my report? Please. Um, uh, employee recognition is on at 8:35, so please go ahead. Okay. The um, yourself and uh, you invited me along to the Moorhead Business Association, um, and we made a presentation out there last Wednesday morning. I thought went over quite well, and and uh, the chair has had uh, some contact with me in regards to some information on funding and taxes and things like that. We've exchanged several emails in regards to that. We did have a, uh, a diversion strategy meeting in regards to um, planning uh, what comes next and the, the, the changes and, and how we approach this thing and, and address different topics. And we also had a, a, a meeting with uh, Congressman Peterson from Minnesota in regards to that. So I'll follow up with some, some information on that to, to Commissioner Campbell and Commissioner Whalen. So uh, with that, Mr. Chair, that concludes mine. Um, do you know if the, why don't, do you know if there's anybody else showing up for employee recognition? We are a few minutes early. I'll tell you what. Uh, let's take about a four or five minute recess just to make sure those who are would like to be here on time are here. Call the meeting back to order at this time, and go to employee recognition. Several. Oh, we'll wait for John. We're not. We'll wait for Commissioner Gamble. Okay. We have someone with us today who has been with us for 25 years, Captain Adi, statistical department specialist, auditor's office. and in grateful recognition of 25 years of outstanding and dedicated service to Clay County citizens, Kathleen. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
her food. She's been with us for 15 years. And if you could give that to her. I will. Bill, are you the only one that doesn't do anything? <laughs> Stacy Christensen. So, <laughs> please give her our best and uh, nice to see you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to comment. This is this is why uh, our county works so well. We've got long-term employees that know what they're doing. So it's we certainly do. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to Nancy, Howard, could you come up? Nancy Kronelka uh, would like us to adopt a resolution classifying tax forfeiture list as non-conservation land. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Great. How about yourself? Good. And that's this item, second to the last one. You're on. It's basically a formality. I need approval in order to carry on with the tax forfeit sale process. Um, I've sent uh, <coughs> copies of each of the legal descriptions over to Kevin at Soil and Water, and he does a determination. Basically, we're determining if any of the properties are forested lands or wetlands. We generally don't have much of that in Clay County, but it still has to be addressed. Gentlemen, any comments or questions? Just a question on this this list. Are these all up for this year then? For yes. When would that be? When is the auction? The um, December 15th, something okay. like that. Yeah. Right. I believe the city of Moorhead might be taking a bunch of properties again off of that list, but mm -hmm. not sure yet. And Nancy, other government entities have the option, if it falls within their jurisdiction, if it's for the public good, they can also do that, correct? Correct. Okay. I would move approval of uh, the request. Second. Discussion. It, oh. appears, it appears that most of them are in the uh, unincorporated areas. I mm -hmm. couldn't find very many. Maybe the one in more, there's one more in township. But, I think there's uh, like two of them. Everything yeah. else is mm -hmm. in the corporate area. Right? Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Um, James Garten and Mark, is it pronounced Vol? Vox. Vox. Okay. Uh, Clay County Economic Development Authority policies. Clarification regarding it. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Nice to have you with us today. I'm zipping around here. <laughs> You're moving faster than a lot of us. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to, to see us. Uh, in our course of uh, normal events, we, you know, our, our business development program, um, you know, it's our goal this year to, to make 150 uh, business development calls in uh, Cass and Clay County. And in the course of uh, one of those calls and working with one of the, the companies here in uh, Clay County, uh, Alderon, um, we and, and Mark had gone through some process about their expansion and, and um, we had gotten some information and then uh, worked with staff and uh, I'll let kind of Mark go through the process. We're here a little bit to uh, throw ourselves on the sword. Staff's done a great job. We, there was some misinterpretation on our part, but I think still in the end there's still some questions that we'd like to resolve and bring up some ideas that we have. Uh, especially in light of, of just some recent events and what's going on in the marketplace. And Mark, I'll let you. Thank you, Jim, and, and thank you, Commissioners, for the opportunity to visit with you this morning. Um, in the past, we have, uh, when we've worked with uh, Cass County and, and the City of Fargo and West Fargo, um, we use, and we talk about incentives, in particular property tax exemptions um, for the community of West Fargo and, and the other two entities, uh, we have developed and have, have implemented a scoring system to 
go through the merit of the project or, or the company or prospect requesting the incentive. And, and we don't get into, through the scoring system, we don't get into <coughs> the financing of the project itself. It's based solely on the merit of the opportunity. It takes into consideration if they're a manufacturing company, for example, and, and what industry sector they're in, how many wages they will pay, um, uh, how many jobs they will create, and it's, it's a point system where they'll get, if they're creating 50 jobs, they're going to get X number of points. If they're creating 10 jobs, they'll get a lesser amount of points. With the target trying to, to be a, a score of 100, and I've got the outline um, that we use, and we would certainly be happy to work with the, uh, the Economic Development Authority to, uh, to implement a, a similar program for Clay County to, to use and to consider uh, as they go through and, and review these exemptions. Um, again, this, this is a system that's used by West Fargo, Fargo and Cass County. We would certainly be happy to modify any programs or, or any part of this that Clay County would be interested in. For example, there may be parts of, or, or communities in Clay County that want to consider hotels and restaurants. Um, Fargo and West Fargo in particular don't incentivize, they, they don't offer property tax exemptions to certain industry sectors. So uh, again, we'd be happy to work with, with the uh, authority to adopt and, and we would suggest that uh, the authority consider using a point system based on the merit of the program and steer away from uh, the, the financial aspects if, if the project needs the exemption to be considered. We would suggest that the exemption shouldn't be part of the gap financing. Leave that to the banks and the financial partners and, and uh, judge a project based solely on the merit uh, of the opportunity. Um, and we would be happy, more than happy, to work with the authority to vet out the project. Anytime they get a request, whether it's primary sector or, or not, if they would like to help us go through the process and, and determine and, and evaluate and make a recommendation, we'd be happy to do that. So uh, I throw it open, any questions? Governor? Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> first thing, and I, I think you're you're talking about uh, our current policy talks about really the only way incentives can come through the form of property tax in Clay County is for the but for uh, financing part of it. We have had this same discussion uh, with our with our planning, and uh, we recognized a while back that that. We should have further discussions about this to possibly open this up to not only be that if it weren't for they couldn't afford it, that you know, then they wouldn't come here, but how about doing it as an incentive to get them to come here? They're, they're two different things. And uh, currently our policy doesn't really deal so much with the incentive side of things to bring businesses here. And I think our board did talk about this, uh, and we, we recognize that we should probably open this up for discussion, but the first thing we're going to need to change is our policy. And I think that we had talked about that, and I think it's in the works. I know uh, our planning director is, um, is, is certainly supportive of us opening this up. And <coughs> you bringing forward these ideas on ways to implement, I think, is a really good thing. Um, you guys, this is your business, right? And as far as bringing other businesses into communities, and and I would hope that we would look to you for your your expertise and knowledge in in helping us frame the policy to meet what we would need. And I, um, you know, and I I would look to um, you know, our administrator to to maybe get that ball rolling because I I do know that. 
right right now we have no incentive for a business to come here when part of their process is, is they go to communities and they ask, well, what can you offer us? And when we can't offer them anything and, and other communities can, then, then we're, we're, we're behind the eight ball right, right at the very beginning. And, uh, so. uh, this, do I understand that it's, this is just West Fargo's policy here that you handed to us? It, it is the same policy for Fargo, for Fargo? and yes. there might be some little minor, but we, we developed that for Fargo, West Fargo, and Cass County. So okay. there might be, as, as uh, Mark said, some little changes for this or that. They might allow certain things that other ones don't, but the basic premise of that is exactly what the other entities. Has Moorhead looked at this? Uh, Moorhead has something actually even more aggressive than that. that. Okay. I, I, question for, go ahead. Uh, the other thing is, is it's not just about the attraction of new companies. It's, it's really about the expansion, expansion and yeah. retention mm -hmm. of existing companies. Uh, I, I think that as we deal with, with uh, businesses here in, in Clay County and especially dealing with the city of Moorhead and working in conjunction with them on, on businesses as well as retention as well as attraction, uh, it's incumbent on us to have as many tools in the toolbox, if you will, as we possibly can to offset some of those other issues. And I think that uh, the most recent situation with uh, PetroServe is a good example with them moving over into Cass County. I think that the, this county and all the municipalities, and we're working with Barnesville and other communities as well, that we need to make sure that we're as competitive as, as possible so we not only have the ability to attract, but more importantly, that we maintain and, and make sure that anybody that wants to do an investment and, and grow here that's already here uh, has the ability to do it and is seeing the same benefits that they would see anywhere else in, in the region. And I think that's the, that's the real underlying issue, um, is to ensure that kind of growth. James, did you have anything you'd like to add? Well, I was just going to basically, uh, say the same thing that, that Jim did, that Clay County is a big part of who we are and what we do, and, and we want to make uh, every opportunity available to be as competitive as possible and, and attract and, and more importantly, uh, retain. 80 plus percent of, of economic development growth comes from within, so, uh, you know, that's the primary focus is, is the retention of, of what is here already because that's much better than going out and getting somebody from Wisconsin to move to Clay County, Minnesota. What, what is here is, is much more stable. Uh, they're a known entity, and, and all of us, uh, our organization, Clay County, whatever municipality would much rather do business and, and provide opportunities for the existing companies to continue to grow. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions for these gentlemen? It seems like this is something that uh, we should refer to that our economic development committee to, to look at and bring back a recommendation. I think it's, it should be strongly considered. Absolutely. And I, Mr. Chairman, I, I think we should, when that committee meeting is held, we'll maybe invite uh, either one or both of you if you can attend to help. Absolutely. That would yeah. be great. Good. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank you. It. Appreciate your being here. <laughs> Looks like it works pretty good. Thank you. You have to take the scenic route. <laughs> Dara Lee, and the mayor, and Commissioner Baki. Close to? Okay. There's room for you too, Les. Come on, Les. Clay County Housing and Redevelopment Authority requests for levy to collect a special benefit tax for 2014 in the amount of $190,000. And we have uh, the director, Dara Lee, uh, HRA Commissioner Les Baki, and Chair Neil Raleigh. And uh, this has to be acted on today. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you for allowing us to come and speak with you. Uh, as 
former, as members of the Clay County, former Clay County Mayor's Association, uh, back about 30 years ago, I guess it 35. Is. <laughs> um, our request today uh, is in front of you. Uh, I'm not going to uh, read it for you because I'm sure you've uh, gone over it yourself. Uh, maybe one of the things we could do is highlight some of the things uh, and then entertain any questions that you have. Uh, if you have your memos uh, in front of you, our request this year uh, is for uh, a special benefit tax of $190,000 <coughs> uh, that was approved by the Board of HRA Board of Commissioners uh, in August, on August 20th. Um, the tax would be levied in all of Clay County, <coughs> except the cities of Moorhead and Barnesville, who of course have their own uh, housing authorities. Um, the tax levy is not subject to the overall levy limits. Um, what we're proposing, uh, the maximum amount available is $458,718. The $190,000 that has been approved by the board is 40% of that maximum levy available. And you'll see <coughs> how it affects uh, taxable market values um, over the Clay County. Uh, that page two is a history of the use of the levy um, uh, in, in Clay County. Um, we uh, adopted a levy in 2008 and 2010. Um, last year, um, we rescinded um, our, uh, our request simply because of uh, the negative impact that uh, it would have affected property owners with last year. Uh, in lieu of that, uh, you did approve $25,000 in general funds to be used as leverage. Um, I think that second paragraph is quite um, very uh, relevant for our situation here, uh, that for each dollar raised in property taxes, the HRA has been able to generate an additional $8 in funding from outside sources as a result of the $200,000 generated by the HRA levy and the $25,000 in general funds, the, the HRA has been able to leverage an additional uh, $1,844,950. $1, the majority of the levered funds <coughs> are from the Community Development Block Grant Funds awarded through the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development, or DEED. The most recent deed grant was awarded to the HRA in 2012. Um, again, next paragraph, uh, since 2008, <coughs> uh, the HRA um, has worked closely with uh, Clay County Social Services with Lakes and Prairies Community Action. Uh, I, I know you're all familiar with the group work camp. Um, and then also working with the West Central Minnesota Community Action Programs Weatherization. Um, all of these <coughs> programs have worked uh, together very closely and collaboratively, collaboratively to be able to um, help uh, particularly elderly citizens remain in their homes, but also uh, families with disabilities and low-income families in Clay County. The proposed uses, as you see there, <coughs> will be for uh, rehabilitation of owner-occupied housing through the deed match and assistance uh, to also to the group work camp. Uh, number two, support of ongoing successful housing programs. And three, pre-development costs for the investigation and creation of additional housing options for Clay County citizens. And then the money breaks out as follows at the bottom of that page. Um, page three really explains each of the areas that we're requesting that the levy dollars be used toward. Again, <coughs> I don't think I'm going to go uh, through anything uh, more there unless you have specific questions. Um, uh, I guess that's about uh, what I'd like to give you in terms of the overall request and then we'll open it up to questions from you for. Dale, what would the ramifications be for the Housing Authority if uh, this did not go through? I think I'm going to refer that to 
Dara. Dara. Um, the first of all, well, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Um, is the reputation and success uh, with DEED and the Community Development Block Grant Program. As you know, that was actually Clay County who's the award recipient, we're the administrator. And as we discussed a couple years ago, and I know you've had a few other discussions since then, so I'll kind of remind you, um, that we knew we had to come up with a matching portion for that grant, um, which is why the Clay County Board originally levied in 2012. Um, but that was the same year that all the changes were made in the property tax calculations. And it was a rough year on taxpayers, mm -hmm. and we just didn't want to add to that at that point in time. And that is why the commission agreed to um, appropriate some money from the general funds in order just to get the application approved. At that point in time, we said, well, we may have to come back, but we'll search for other resources in the meantime, which we have done. We've brought in about $100,000 also during that time period for the Minnesota um, Housing Finance Agency for rehab on Clay County homes. Um, but we're at a point now where our homeowners that we're currently working with, we have five folks who the bids are in, the contractors are selected, the deed money's in place, and they each need a $7,500 match. Um, and they have gone to all the banks, they've looked into the low income programs, and they are not fitting into categories. And so we are seeing that need and we have taken every angle that we can determine to try and, and fill it. We have applied, did I, you know, about a, this p p uh, application to rural development for a potential $23,000, but just to try and get those resources into the hands of those homeowners. Um, so that's the primary reason we're coming back. Also, when I was listening to the last conversation that you were having um, on economic development in the county, uh, one of the issues that comes up is where are folks going to live? We're looking at the Holly area right now that is creating a number of new jobs. And if you look at the housing market in Holly for what's affordable, it's tough. We, we have a couple of uh, public housing units out there. We just put four rent signs up, and I think we've gotten eight calls in the first week for families who are looking for housing there. Um, and it, the lots that are available to develop in Holly, you need to be able to um, qualify for a pretty uh, high uh, mortgage in order to live there. Uh, so we've been looking at that and last year we wanted to go in and do a tax credit development that's really targeted at 80 percent of area median, about fifty some thousand dollars, to help those folks establish homes in Clay County and start to consider Clay County as their home base for when they may move into, to move up into other homes instead of what we've been seeing are folks moving across the river to find more affordable housing. Um, so I could go on and on and on. Thank you. <laughs> I'll stop. But what was the levy in 2008 and 2000? It was $100,000 each year. 100000 each year. And I believe it in 08, and, and Lori is the expert, I am not at all, um, but I believe that the cap net max that at that point was about 250000 Yeah, I'm not. I, don't I think it was 258 is what I'm thinking. And then what do I still. I'm, Maybe it's me, but pre-development costs for the investigation and creation, what does that mean? That's right. what I was talking about as far as developing additional housing options in Clay County. Last year we literally were in the position to submit an application that I think would have been very competitive to do 40 units in town. Um, but to do that you have to secure land, you have to secure architectural fees, um, and we, uh, our primary source of funding is federal we were hit pretty hard by sequestration. And at that point, we determined we could not take the risk to do new programs when we weren't sure that we could keep our current programs going. Um, on a national level, uh, what we're hearing is you gotta do what you need to do to survive until we can see what happens with sequestration. And we've been surviving. Um, but you'll see in our Housing Choice Voucher Program, which typically brings in 1.6 to 1.8 million dollars to landlords in Clay County every year and supports 360 households a month. I said we would be able to support 330 for September, we're down to 327. So there's 33 households in Clay County today that aren't getting help that we could be helping. And, and the reality is if we're able to put some local investment into that, then the following year the feds look at how much did you spend in the previous year and that's what they base their future funding on, so that if we can support that with some local dollars, we can once again generate additional dollars coming into Clay County. Um, 
So a lot of this request is based on sequestration then? Um, you'll see 50000 of it is. We were impacted about $150,000 this year due to sequestration. Uh, but it, it's more than that in that that revenue will generate additional revenue from other sources. Uh, that's one of the, the premises behind what we've done in the past and what we hopefully will always do is that any investment made by a taxpayer in Clay County will come back with a return. I can't always promise 820 percent returns, but that, that these are investments being made in our community. Further questions? Kevin? Yeah. Um, and I go to I want to go to the two items here that I'm going to tell you just like I tell everybody else within our county who deals with the federal government and state government in terms of funding. I have a real concern about um, us being the band aid for losses from the state and federal government because I, I, it it then goes to property tax, which to me is is as regressive as you can get, and uh, I don't. You know, the sequestration thing really bothers me. I got a son-in-law who um, works for the government, and the sequestration cost him 20% of his pay. But yet we would ask them that he turn around and have his property taxes increased on top of his 20% pay reduction from his sequestration. So th this affects many other people as well. And I just don't know how long we can continue to take a look at what are the responsibilities of other forms of government passed on and because they will no longer do it that we should and then if we don't we're made to feel and look like the bad guys for not doing it and that really really bothers me and clearly within your two topics here in terms of the operations and and the development for new housing uh, if you know you're 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 saying here if it wasn't for the sequestration, because those were lost dollars to you, there was fifty thousand in operations, and you're, to, you're you're only asking for fifty of the hundred and fifty you lost on the development for new housing opportunities. And that is still a hundred thousand dollars that we're being asked to fund, that was funded by other agencies who probably have more responsibility in that area than what county property tax should. So I, I'm struggling deeply with that and I, I've shared that with our health and human services and our social service departments because the same things happen there and we recognize that I mean what if you would have lost all your funding from the federal government but does that mean that the county government should step in I I don't know how we can be the answer to everybody's that's my concern and I so I, I'm and the fact that this is just coming up and and you need a you need an answer today I, yes. I, yes. Huh? I, yep. And Mr. Chairman, our, our administrators also. Right. And Mr. Chair, uh, we went ahead with setting our maximum levy uh, today because um, Commissioner Everett will be gone, mm -hmm. and we wanted to include him in on it. Uh, I did check with Lori uh, because I did respond to the chairman that the the uh, levy max levy would have to be set today, but that's. I'll clarify only because Commissioner Everett is here. We do have until the 15th to set max levy. Uh, yeah, on and I understand this falls outside the levy limits too, but yes. you know, that, that's not the issue here. Yeah. The issue is it falls outside the levy limits, but it still shows up on the property tax statement as something, right. something new that our property tax people are going to have to pay. But does, getting back, does this have to be acted upon today? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, Excuse. no. It has to be acted upon by the 15th, though, of September. Okay, so it could be acted upon next week. Yes. Okay. Yes. John? Well, this is a, always a philosophical question that we, we wrestle with as to, as to how we deal with uh, federal and state cuts. Uh, it sometimes, I mean, on one, one hand, when you make them up locally, uh, then it makes it look like you really didn't need it in the first place. And, uh, you know, that message we don't want Washington or St. Paul to get. Uh, on the other hand, if you don't do it, you've got, uh, we've got probably uh, 30 more homeless families in the, uh, in the county. And uh, we have a responsibility there to, to care for our citizens uh, there, too. So it's, it's not an easy, easy uh, question to, to deal with. Um, hopefully the sequestration will will uh, finally be resolved. I don't know. And it's, it gets less likely all the time, I suppose. But um, we would hope that uh, 
some people in Washington would uh, would grow up and begin to act responsibly and as soon as uh, as soon as that's possible. But um, uh, I I think I mean I I will support the uh, the levy. I think that it's uh, that it's important that we that we uh, do all we can to keep people housed and that and that the rents are paid. Uh, but uh, but it isn't an easy philosophical question. It's really uh, you you really wonder what message we're send <coughs> sending to Washington when we do that. Okay. Frank, do we have any of all these people that we're helping here? Uh, I mean, you're saying that the bank didn't help. I mean, couldn't do it. It wouldn't approve it. No, by giving them a little bit more money, that's going to get them approved. Do we have any figures on how many of these people follow, continue following through on the program? Uh, I mean, do they lose their houses or anything like that? Uh, I'm happy to say in the history of the program um, that we've, at least for what we've had in place since 2008, uh, where the, the re, uh, foreclosure um, spiked, we've had one foreclosure in our history. Everybody else has been able to maintain their housing successfully. Okay. We do quite a bit of work with the homeowners. Um, some of these folks would not have been able to stay in their homes. They well, I realize that. That's what I guess too, I'm trying too to find dilapidated. Out. And then, and I know this has been an issue in the past for Commissioner Campbell, is that these funds now would be re are set up as recycling, their revolving loan fund, so that when people move from their home or sell it, that the funds come back and can be reinvested in the community um, in another homeowner. We, we have not gotten that turnover because people have been staying in their homes. And so we're happy with that. Um, but if they were to leave their homes, they have to repay it. But, but we've had one loss in the history of the program. Okay. So. Further, further comments? Well, yeah. I, and again, I, I, I have supported the rehabilitation part of your program in the past because I've, I've recognized the importance and how you've been able to use those dollars to obtain many more dollars. To, and to me, the not only the part of re rehabilitation that's there, is it also uh, keeps communities looking good. So I, I, I don't have any problem with that, that part of this. Where, where my heartburn lies is in this area that we're now being asked to, to subsidize the federal government. And I, I, I just struggle with that. And the operations, the operations end of it, I think, is the part that you're talking about. That 50000 is to kind of offset for these 32 homes. Right. Because the development of new housing opportunities, that, that doesn't have anything to do with those um, Right. And we've had to keep properties. other resources in place because we're unsure of what the federal government is right. going to do. Yeah. I just so, want to clarify that. Um, I, I just, I, I'm hey, let me, um, frustrated with Anything this. else? Not right now. Okay. Uh, would you like to act on this today, or would you like to wait until next week? I'd like to discuss it further. Today? Okay. Today Go ahead. Now, yes. Uh, the uh, group work camp uh, thing. You explained that. I, my understanding is that you were that you gave only five thousand before, and so this is to help make up for our. Yes, we we were looking at the county's um, position. I knew with the. And now I'm not really clear exactly what the, the limits were in place for the county, but um, with the, the understanding that we were working at and that you guys were in a tight spot. Um, and if these were county dollars, as you said, that show up on everybody's tax statement, um, we had no issue and would be happy to take over that responsibility if as because it's a housing activity um, that happens throughout the county. And so what we talked about was taking over the county's portion as well as the HRA portion that has been issued in the past, but I'm sure that the Group 4 camp, if the county would still choose to participate, uh, could use those extra dollars as well. It's one of the areas where, you know, we've seen a, a great return. I, I share the Commissioner's heartburn on the federal and state resource issue. Um, I just want to point out that we are one of the very few county housing authorities in this community that hasn't been, lot, been levying for 20 to 30 years. Most county housing authorities have been supplementing those funds for the past couple of decades. Our agency has done whatever we can to avoid doing that. Um, we, t we earn our keep and we have for the last 38 years. Um, and it is always our intention to, to continue to do that in the future. Um, 
but it's gotten to the point where we have had to join our brethren HRAs. We are government entities. Normally government entities do um, rely on some tax dollars to operate and um, make this request. I, I, once again, I, I understand the frustration. I wish I weren't here. I'm sure our commissioners wish that they weren't here. Uh, but uh, and we wouldn't be here if we didn't think it was a positive investment for the citizens of Clay County. And as John was saying, otherwise it puts even more of a so burden on the social services departments as well. John, anything else? No. Okay. Anybody? Would you like to act on this today, gentlemen, or would you like to wait until next week? Well, I would like to because I can't act on it next week. Okay. Unless there's some particular reason people want to do some more research or something. I don't know. I don't know what more research can be done. You either yeah. you're either going to support it or you're not going to support it. And I, I uh, unless unless there was entertainment to remove parts of this out, I, I I'm not going to support it. But I, the problem is, is I do support portions of it. And okay. do we have a motion? I would move that we uh, we support the request as as submitted. Do we have a second? I'll second. Further discussion? Well, I, I'm I'm going to support it. I, I'm reluctant to support it for the same reasons that Commissioner Campbell indicated. And part of it is, I think, what Dar said that the HRA here has a history of not, you know, looking for these kind of funds. But you know, but you know, for the the future, I think you know what we discussed. I mean, we it's going to be virtually impossible for us to make up all these funds that the state and the federal government are cutting people back and and of course it's natural everybody comes you know looking for to continue funding at the levels that they've had in the past and it's just going to be virtually impossible to do that and so you know like i say i'll i'll, I'll reluctantly support this because of the you know the the history and i know that the hra is doing what they can not not to do this and but you know in the future i i, I would have a difficult time continuing this for trying to make up these funds so further discussion Kevin? Oh. oh brian oh go ahead kevin you go okay ahead. i um, kevin, you first you know i uh, i am not going to support the motion and i'm not going to just support the motion because of the funding portions that are dealers with operations and the development part of this and at some point in time we can't just say well we'll we'll live with it this time but we're at some point in time we have to just draw the line and say we can no longer do this anymore and and we heard it a lot this year about federal dollars being bumped in a lot of the areas within our own county departments and uh, I would love to support the vast majority of your requesting here. And, um, and I don't have any problems with that. I think that's great. But I, I, for those other reasons, it's not anything with the AHRA. My issue is with other entities of government who are failing in their responsibilities. Brian? Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, th that was my question, too, in regards to the 50,000 operation. Yes. Is that perpetual then a possibility that, that if this has been eliminated and we pick up this 50,000, then next year are we going to, or is the county um, levy going to have to pick up the, the operation of 50,000 and unless the federal government changes? And let's face it, folks, the federal government is spending 40% more than they're taking in. I don't think they're going to increase spending. You know, so I think it is going to fall on the county levy. Uh, for operational purposes, and, and I think that's what Commissioner Campbell is exactly. Mean. And am I right on that? Well, I wish I had the crystal ball that I could give you the perfect answer. I can tell you, though, when you're asking about this uh, money for the development, we would love to once again be able to completely earn our keep. How we do that is by doing development and earning fees. We, in the last several years, have um, earned approximately $280,000 by do, develop, doing development and earning fees. There's a risk involved with that, though. And so part of the reason that's included in here is because, A, I do think it's economic development within the county, and B, because it is a way of us supplanting uh, and finding other replacement funds. We're not naive. We, uh, we have known for years that we are in a declining um, funding situation by the federal and state governments. And so we are looking for creative ways and solutions to fill those gaps. 
our creativity ran short this year. <laughs> and but I'm happy to report that we have a, an additional eight vouchers coming in from state funds to help homeless families that we were just awarded this past week. And we will continue to search for those opportunities. To but I can't promise because <laughs> I don't have my crystal ball. <laughs> Thank you, Dora. But but is that a right, a fair assumption though that I mean th these. These grants and deets matches, they're one-time dollars, but the operational ones are continuous, possibly continuous if you don't get the federal funding, if you want to keep your vouchers up as high numbers, right? Um, we, if we invest now, we get more money next year. And so the way that the federal government does its funding, that these dollars would count as if they were federal dollars this year, and so it's possible that no that it may only be you one or two times. Later. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Further discussion? Vicki, would you call the roll, please? Everett? Yes. Campbell? No. Wayland? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, you've got by easy. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I'm the new boy on the board. <laughs> I see. He's there. I can now make the vote. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Anything further to the good of the order, gentlemen? Oh, yeah. No, I did not. I did not. Anything else? I wanted to comment about uh, the loss of uh, V.J. Sethi and uh, and what he has meant to to Clay County. Uh, uh, we certainly wouldn't be in the kind of uh, good position we are in many many fronts without V.J.'s. Uh, dedicated work over the years and I as I told uh, his wife on Sunday uh, when we visited with her that uh, uh, VJ had a way of making us uh, uh, making us look good and uh, uh, we probably would not uh, uh, not be seen in as favorable a light by the citizens if it wasn't for the hard work that VJ did for us and uh, and so on so I just want to want to uh, acknowledge that uh, we'll be going to his uh, funeral today uh, I'm going to be, uh, some of us are also going to be going to the Hindu uh, service that we'll be following at the nursing home, or n nursing home, at the funeral home. And uh, uh, it's, uh, even though we won't know what's going on at that service, I think it's uh, in, tri in tribute to him. I'd like to, like to observe it uh, as well. Um, one of the things that uh, Mary Claire told me on Sunday was that uh, the uh, priest uh, uh, that's going to be doing the service uh, Said that uh, as a as a non non Catholic uh, participant in their in their service that he uh, he was uh, a greater of greater involvement than most of their most of their parishioners. He volunteered for everything. He worshipped regularly uh, with the family and so on. Uh, but he uh, he maintained his Hindu traditions as well. And uh, uh, in the in the uh, if those of you who were at the funeral funeral uh, visitation thing yesterday and saw the brochure uh, already there's a picture of uh, VJ in meditation at uh, at the lake and I think that that's uh, uh, the Hindu Hindu uh, tradition of meditation and so on is, is well typified by his uh, by that picture and uh, I just want to acknowledge uh, with gratitude for his his life and and, uh, and that we will be celebrating that life uh, today so, yeah.